Nayujamanayam Bhaktya Bhagavad Akilatnani Sadrishosti Shiva Bhanta Yoginam Bhama Siddhaye. Perfection and self realization cannot be attained by any kind of yogi unless he engages in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for that is the only auspicious path. <laughs> Report that knowledge and renunciation, that knowledge and renunciation are never perfect unless joined by devotional service, is explicitly explained here. Now, yujamanaya means without being dovetailed. When there is devotional service, then the question is where to offer that service. Devotional service is to be offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the super soul of everything, for that is the only reliable path of self-realization or Brahman realization. The word Brahma Siddhaya means to understand oneself to be different from matter, to understand oneself to be Brahman. The Vedic words are aham brahmasami. Brahma Siddha means that one should know that he is not matter, he is pure soul. There are different kinds of yogis, but every yogi is supposed to engage in self realization or Brahman realization. It is clearly stated here that unless one is fully engaged in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot have easy approach to the path of. Brahma Siddhi. In the beginning of the second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that when one engages himself in devotional service of Vasudeva, spiritual knowledge and renunciation of the material world automatically become manifest. Thus, the devotee does not have to try separately for renunciation or knowledge. This is what we were discussing earlier. Devotional service itself is so powerful that by one's service attitude, everything is revealed. It is stated here, Shiva Panta, that this is the only auspicious path for self-realization. The path of devotional service is most confidential, meaning means to attain Brahman realization. That perfection in Brahman realization is attained through the auspicious path of devotional service indicates that the so-called Brahman realization or realization of the Bhavan effulgence is not Brahma City. Beyond that Brahma Jyoti, there is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Upanishads, a devotee prays to the Lord to kindly put aside the effulgence, Brahma Jyoti, so the devotee may see within the Brahma Jyoti the actual eternal form of the Lord. Unless one attains realization of the transcendental form of the Lord, there is no question of bhakti. Hmm. Bhakti necessitates the existence of the recipient, devotional service, and the devotees who render devotional service. Brahma City through devotional service is realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The understanding of the effulgent rays of the body of the Supreme Lord is not the perfect stage of Brahma City or Brahman realization, nor is the realization of the Paramatma feature of the Supreme Person perfect for Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Akilatma. He is the super soul. One who realizes the Supreme Personality realizes the other features, namely Paramatma feature and Brahman feature, and that total realization is Brahma City. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksu Unnalitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurudevena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mak 
Bhakti Bhakti Vyanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nir Vishesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine. Banchikopa Tarubascha, Kripa Sindhu Be Bacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasati Gaur, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You can uh, place the purport on the screen beginning with the very beginning. Yeah. Okay, so there is a very popular saying in India, Yatamata Tatapata. I'm okay, and you're okay. And worship is absolute. The principle of worship is the perfection of life. And therefore, as long as you're involved with worship, that's good. That's perfect. That's your, uh, how you choose to worship, that's up to you. But you, as long as you worship. And so mm, that has resulted in various types of focuses, which are known as different types of spiritual practices. Um, but we see here that unless one comes to the inclusive path of spirituality, inclusive means it concludes everything else, then the main point is, is not attained. And that is realization of the personality of Godhead. When we develop a relationship with a person in this world, we get to know about them as a person, their activities, what they like and what they don't like, who are their associates, um, a variety of characteristics and qualities that make up that person. And that becomes the understanding of that person. So the absolute truth, you know, Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadi Radha Govinda Sarva Karana Karana Aham Adhi Devanam Aham I. Throughout the Bhagavad Gita, in many places, not just a few times, but many places, Krishna establishes himself as that supreme person from which everything comes. Vedanti tad tad vad vidyad ked gyanam avayam brahmeti paramat meghi bhagavan meti sabjate. The reason why and because it's the most rarest, the reason why it's the most rarest is that people don't want to undergo the principles that take, that are required to come to, to personal realization or to realization of the full manifestation of the absolute truth. And therefore we have, you know, various types of meditation, various types of pujas, various types of prayers, various types of austerities, various uh, focuses on different levels of study within the broader principle of Shastra. Um, that is not completely wrong, but unless one comes eventually, in other words, other these other parts, levels of practice or more or less stages for people who are on that level of understanding. We have the example 
of the uh, four Kumaras. The four Kumaras were Brahmavatis. They had realized the Brahman of Fulgen and were situated in transcendental knowledge. But when they had come to Vaikuntha and smelled the sweet fragrance of Tosi leaves mixed with sandalwood pulp, which were smeared on the lotus feet of the Lord, that alone transformed their consciousness to Bhagavan realization. They didn't hold on to their level of realization as the ultimate, and they were willing to accept the next level when it was revealed to them. But there are a class of people who read and study scripture and take whatever they read or study as the ultimate principle, not knowing that beyond that there is something higher or reinterpreting their position in relationship to something higher as just being another part of the same thing. In other words, whatever you're doing, whatever I'm doing is the same, um, but they don't see there's gradations of understanding based on philosophical and spiritual practices that uh, move on to a higher level, ultimately coming to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about himself in that role as the supreme power, the supreme person, the supreme source, the supreme provider, the supreme maintainer, ultimately the supreme destroyer. But he doesn't go into how to realize himself in that in detail, he gives some preliminary understanding. In the 11th canto, when he speaks the same knowledge to Uddhava, he goes more into the, the details of his nature. And then of course, in Srimad Bhagavatam, you read how the great souls worship the Lord in the different manifestations of his personality, such as his different incarnations such as Nishringa, Vamana, Matsya, Korma, the various forms of the Lord and those devotees which are fixed on worshiping that particular form of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But form is, is personality or form is an expression of personality. And therefore we ever see form but of course, there is a class of people who say that forms are simply created out of imagination and ordered for worship. And therefore, the forms are simply meant, meant to focus a worship, but beyond the form, there is the unmanifested formlessness, which is the source of everything. Even the forms that appear, they are, they appear to, uh, for time, place, and circumstance, they are not eternal. In other words, if they're not eternal, they're material. So this is the different way. So here, this verse is saying that without coming to the platform of um, understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engaging in service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot understand what is Brahma City. What Brahma City means to know that one is not matter, he is a pure soul. It says here, one cannot have an easy approach to the path of Brahma City. One can, have, one can approach the path of Brahma City even from the impersonal point of view, but Krishna sp explains that in the fifth chapter of the 12th, uh, fifth verse in the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Klesha Diktarata Stesha Mavyakta Yakta Teshisam. He says uh, that persons who try to reach 
the impersonal through various processes, it takes them great amount of time and trouble. And very few they actually succeed because the path is so exact that a slight deviation from the path, everything is lost. In other words, it's so rigid that if you somehow or other uh, make some error in your practice or in the understanding of the practice or in the knowledge of the goal, and the whole thing is lost. <laughs> That's why it says, Aruna Kishtrena Padam Padam Padatiyadana Uskur Mahangrayaha. That persons who rise very high on the spiritual platform because they have no regard from the lotus feet of the Lord, they again, Padantiyada, they fall down again into material existence and take up welfare work on behalf of some quasi spiritual path. <laughs> So one has to engage in devotional service. Now, devotional service is not as simple as we <coughs> mention it quite easy, devotional service. What is devotional service and how to reach devotional service? It says here, the past is most confidential. It's most confidential. So it is revealed, as Krishna says, I reveal this most confidential knowledge to you, O Arjun, because you are never envious of me. So one has to be free from the quality of envy in order to understand how the path of bhakti uh, actually should be traversed. <laughs> And there's many certain many qualities that are must be adopted and many uh, so-called qualities we call them qualities but they're actually not qualities they're they're just we call them bad qualities or qualities that are opposite they have to be relinquished <clears throat> otherwise one cannot stay on the path of bhakti the path is um, it is continuous with attention and with faith to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and to engage in practical activities to serve the Lord. That makes up the path of devotional service. Manaso deho deho yokichu mor arpilu tualpade nandi kishor. Bhaktivinoda Thakur prays in this particular verse, O Nandiki Shur Krishna, uh, everything that I have belongs to you. You are ultimately everything. And so whatever I have has been given to me by you to be used in your service. I may take whatever I want and uh, whatever I need in order to live in this world. <laughs> But that taking is also an element of my service to you because it stabilizes my activities where I can serve you uh, continuously. So the soul by nature um, is in the position of service. Uh, in fact, the whole existence of material and spiritual centers around one activity, service. Everyone is serving something. You can't get, no one can get away from the mood of service. We serve family members, we serve friends, we serve our society, we serve our community, we serve our nation. We serve on different levels within these categories and we also serve our own ideas when if we don't even have any of that service we find a lower animal such as a dog or a, a uh, what is a turtle <laughs> a tortoise or a, what else uh, what is that little animal that people like to keep it in a cage a rabbit there's another one we get a little pet and then they feed the pet and 
Yeah, hamster. That's who you got it. You got a hamster or something, you know, you got to serve something. <laughs> because if you don't serve something, you're not living, actually. So hamster, dog, you know, some, some, everyone has to serve something. But people are averse to serving the personality of Godhead because they don't see how they can benefit from that. Although the benefits are, are uh, profuse and every other benefit falls short and is dissipated in time where the benefits of devotional service are always there and always increasing. So um, we should learn what is bhakti. Parrots, parakeets, lovebirds, you name it. There's a whole list of animals we want to uh, somehow or other focus on. So uh, why not focus on Krishna? I know one, uh, I mean, she, she was a nice person and uh, but her whole house was full of birds and she had so many bird cages. And uh, she was, she actually started to look like a bird after a while when I kept seeing her and she would come to my programs in one city when I was doing preaching in America. And her husband, he was a devotee and took initiation eventually. Uh, but she was, uh, she couldn't get away from her birds. And if one of her birds died, it was, it was like, you know, the end of the world for her. So um, the whole, her whole life was just, you know, birds. <laughs> and uh, her husband, he was so humble and he tolerated all of it. <laughs> I guess after some time he decided that uh, it was too much for him, so he he, uh, he left the world. But he got initiated before he left the world. I guess I think she's still with her birds. So this is the way of, you know people get attached to something in this world. And but we need, as it says, that attachment to the temporary reapplied to the eternal has unlimited benefit. So we have to get attached to somebody or something in this world. Why not get attached to Krishna? And Krishna has all amazing qualities. Uh, one of his most amazing quality out of all of the qualities is his kindness towards his devotee. How he is always there to look after a devotee, provide the devotee whatever they need to live and to do their service. Well, one of the qualities of Krishna is that if he wants something done, he will inspire his devotee to do it and give the devotee the intelligence how, intelligence how to carry it out. will also provide the facilities he needs to carry it out. And then when the devotee does something noteworthy in devotional service, Krishna gives the credit to his devotee. Although he does everything in the background, he's providing, he's inspiring, he's initiating, he, he's guiding. But uh, he doesn't take credit, <laughs> nor does he want to take credit. He wants to give credit to his devotees because that's his love for his devotee. So one of, one of the most amazing or we might say not amazing, but outstanding qualities of the Lord is his kindness to the devotees and also to the non-devotees too. The demons are going on by the mercy of the Lord. If Krishna wants, he can just send a little wind and all the demons are finished. But he allows the karmic activities to play themselves out and people are under the influence of his external energy and therefore they get the results accordingly. So although the demons are what they are, causing trouble to themselves and others, still they go on because they are worshiping Krishna 
in the form of worshiping his material energy. They are good devotees of Maya. They are Maya, Maya Bhaktas, and they are expert in uh, manipulating the material energy in order to uh, facilitate their desires to enjoy in this material world more and more. At least they think they're enjoying it. That's another point. So devotional service, when you come to devotional service, it's not easy to come to the path of bhakti. One has to come to the path of bhakti when they are free. And Krishna says that. I think I have the quote here. I'm not sure if I do or not. But only when one gives up every desire to enjoy material life, only then can they begin bhakti. So we haven't begun bhakti as, still, as long as we still try to enjoy in this material world. Our bhakti has really has not really begun in the real sense. We may do some activities of bhakti, but because we mix it in, we are more prone to uh, give attention and importance to fulfilling material desires. If you want to fulfill material desires, then just do one thing, don't try to fulfill them. That's, it's that easy because as you make advancement in devotional service, Krishna will provide everything you need materially also. He does that for his devotee, there's no need and even if you don't ask for it, Krishna will give it to you because he knows, oh, I want, my devotee wanted this and they gave it all up for me, but I'll give it to them anyway. But of course, he doesn't give you anything that's going to cause you to, to leave the path of bhakti. He gives you those things that you may want that will help you to live in this world. So when we try separately for these things, we are wasting our time and missing in the opportunity to associate with Krishna in devotional service. He is always there in the heart of his devotees, constantly advising the devotees, do this, you wanted to do this, okay, you can do this. I think um, here it is, a, I'll, uh, I'll leave here for a minute. Let me figure out how to leave, okay. I'll be right back. It was posted by Mahima a couple of days ago. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Okay, that's one of them. Let me see this one here. Yeah, here Prabhupada says, if you got, if you have got a small tinge of idea that I want to become happy materially in this way, so long you have it to accept the material body. So, the nature is so kind that in whatever way you want to enjoy this material world, she will give you a suitable body under the direction of the Lord. Krishna wants that you get full experience that by material gain, you will never be happy. Oh, you want this? All right, here, try it. Okay, it didn't bring you happiness. Now come back to me. No, I wanna try this. All right, go ahead, try that and see what happens. Oh, Krishna's so kind, he'll also allow you to, you know, play around for a while until you get tired. And he'll also protect you so you don't, you know, go too far away. But he, he wants to show you that your, your desire to find happiness in the material way is, uh, is just leading you away from your best interests, from, your, from real happiness. So oh, that's Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, but the path of devotional service 
is available by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, and it's very powerful. There's nothing that can compare to devotional service. One who is situated in devotional service, free from the desire to enjoy material happiness or material comforts, um, will can attract and uh, can attract the personality of Godhead like that. Because this material world is so designed as to so has somehow or other try to um, separate ourselves from our real happiness, which is Brahma Sokyam, transcendental happiness. But if we say no to material happiness, what is material happiness? Anything that's not in relationship to Krishna. Or anything that makes us uh, takes us away from the path of bhakti. That's uh, so-called material desires, material happiness. Because it's material, it's temporary. Because it's material, it's based on the body. Because it's material, it also has a built-in element of suffering within it. So we have to come to this understanding that there's no happiness in this material world. Sometimes devotees think, well, you know, I've tried to be happy in so many ways, but I haven't tried this way yet, so let me try this way. Let me make a lot of money, let me get a big position in this world, and then I'll have, just like, I give you an example of Prabhupada. Uh, and Prabhupada was told by his spiritual master to go to the West and preach, but Prabhupada was thinking, well, let me establish myself first here in India through preaching. And once I get a name and reputation, then I can go to the West. But Prabhupada talks about that. And he said, in reflecting upon, it, he said, Krishna didn't want that. He said, just go and I will provide everything you need. So we forget to, we forget that the Lord is providing whatever we need. We don't have to give up devotional service in order to get something material. If we stay in devotional service, everything we need will also automatically follow because that's Krishna's kindness. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Very nice class on devotional service. Thank you so much. Um, devotees, if, they ha if you have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, you can go ahead. Ashutosh Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, I'll, I'll wait for you. Please go ahead, Mataji. No, you go ahead, Ashutosh Prabhu. No problem. Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Humble obeisances to you. Maharaj, I was just listening to the soul's tendency of... Um, uh, to be to be wanting to serve and we talked about the highest taste of serving Krishna but can that also go alongside uh, I guess my question is that yes we are wanting and we are trying to serve Krishna but at the same time we are trying to also serve uh, the near our loved ones can both things not go hand in hand yeah yeah Krishna doesn't say give up your family he never says anything like that in fact, family life is one of the four, four ashrams. It's called Grihastha Ashram. If one, one follows the principles of Grihastha Ashram, and that includes service to the family on, the, on, on basic levels, 
but it also includes service to the family on the spiritual level too, combining both of those principles. So I think devotees get stuck when they when they see these two things as contrary. Uh, they're not contrary. They have, we have to learn, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yat karosi arnasi yat jahosi dadasi yat yat tapasi tukonti yat tad kurusha, kurusha madarpanam. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away as all as well as all sacrifices you may perform should be done as an offering to me. You keep Krishna as the goal of your activities and therefore in Grihastha life there's his rules and regulations that we need to follow as guidelines so we can take care of our material responsibilities in the proper way and at the same time move forward on the path of devotional service. And as the father in the family, he is meant to be the one to guide the rest of the family in this way. So we have to know what are those principles and how to apply them. But you know, there's no contradiction in terms of these two things. If we okay. lean too far in, in the material sense, then we forget about what is our actual goal. And so therefore, there is another aspect of family life, which is called griha medi. That means, griha medi means selfish seeing everything in relationship to oneself. The main thing in, in Grihastha life is to see everything in relationship to Krishna. That's mm -hmm. all. Okay. My wife, she is Krishna's part and parcel. I'm serving my wife as my wife and, and because it's service to Krishna. So I do that duty in the proper way. There's also affection and there's also concern. It's not like all these things are absence. Mm -hmm. And this is where devotees get confused or get stuck. They see these things as contrary, or they can't figure out how to amalgamate both of these aspects of one lifestyle into a direction where both one can fulfill both. So one of the principles is learning how to balance. So there has to be a foundation that establishes the balance. So in that foundation, therefore, one has to have some regular sadhana every day, which is the basis or the foundation for becoming, uh, what we say, successful in both areas of activity, family maintenance and spiritual activity, spiritual progression. So it's a science, you know, and it's mentioned throughout the Bhagavad Gita. If you read the third canto of Srimad Bhagavad, there's so much on householder life in that third canto. It's just saturated with that. It centers around the whole story of Devahuti and Kardamma Muni. But the principles are given in detail, all the way from the beginning, before one's married, all the way to the time one gives up their body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we just have to know that those principles and how to apply it. The application comes by inquiring from the spiritual master, or even better, coming from inquiring from those grihastas who are actually doing it and have become successful. We learn from other grihastas who who are living that life, how they are applying the principles and how they are working through their different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. That's even better than the spiritual master, I think, because mm -hmm. the, uh, what we say, the example of success is something we learn from. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. A lot to do. I mean, there's a lot to do, but this is the, the basic ideas anyway. Right. So you just have to somehow sync them and make them happen at the same time, or one serving the other, one as a subset of the other. Yeah, they're both they're, they're both connected, and once once you start to bring them both together, they become one. And then there's no separation between the two. Your spiritual life and your material responsibilities become one activity. Okay. 
थैंक यू महाराज हरे कृष्ण हरे गुड लक थैंक यू महाराज the the problem is is that it's not so much the family itself it's the outside influences which bombard us and make the responsibilities of family life so difficult mm -hmm. there's where we there's where we get a little bit overwhelmed yeah but i guess for grass people it cannot we cannot live in isolation and say yeah you can you know my sole focus is krishna we've got a day you know like a day job which is looking after the family and the kids but the main job is the main occupation is is krishna yeah include them include everybody in that main occupation along with doing the you know family responsibilities okay if they're not all included then it becomes difficult <laughs> hmm That's true. Thank you, Maharaj. That's why when uh, when famous Greek philosopher and uh, philanthropist and philosopher, his name was Diogenes. Mm -hmm. he, he was known as a teacher, and, and so one lady she came and said to Diogenes, "I have a." my son can you teach him you know because he was also teaching spiritual principles along with moral principles and so the ajani said well how long how old is the, the boy is the boy and she said he's 5 years old the ajani said oh 5 years old we already 5 years too late let us begin right away mm. so when raising children it starts from the womb but we may not have the had that opportunity because we may have came to krishna consciousness late in the later part but therefore you know we have to work and on that part and try to make up the difference in bringing the children to be actively interested in krishna when you start from the zero it's easy but when you start mm. later then it's more than an effort mm -hmm. right yeah yeah i get that man yeah i'm trying to link it with what what my driving instructor one told one told me he said i've got to first work on undoing your bad habits before i start working on your good habits yeah so i guess true. if i had started at zero <laughs> Would have been a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a there's a music school in Vienna that says the same thing. They don't take anybody into that music school. It's a prestigious school. It's in Austria. It's in Vienna, Austria. And mm -hmm. uh, their their rule is anyone who has any previous musical training and is not allowed in. they want to Make teach them. you from scratch yeah yeah right so you know but it's not that because that's there it doesn't mean we can't be successful it's just it takes a little greater effort therefore community is uh needed for support not just the, the nuclear family is not enough we we should hmm. establish regular community And that means coming together to more often both on the social level and on the spiritual level and both as they said there's an old saying in india i mean it's within it's a moral saying it says it takes a village to raise a child yeah yeah you heard that right yeah yes indeed maharaj yeah which is correct i mean that's how we grew up now it's different yeah yeah it's all it's everything is placed upon the parents mm -hmm. and maybe the teachers but the teachers are not reliable because they're teaching something else you know yeah that's true 
Yeah, so this this materialistic society is we have to, we have to fight against the current at the same time establish the principle. <laughs> But the key is association. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Thanks a lot. I hope you're not discouraged. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, uh, it actually makes it easier. It clarifies. And I guess that's, that's the real purpose of asking a question. It makes it, it makes it easier to then understand what is the underlying message. What is uh, what is that is required to, to be done in this instance? Work on one work on one step at a time, and you'll find that it becomes easier to take care of the other steps. Mm -hmm. Wherever it's weak, go for that step first, and then strengthen that, and then that will help you strengthen the other other responsibilities needed. <laughs> Okay, all right, Maharaj. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience, Sri Devi Mataji. You're most welcome, Ashadosh Prabhu. Hare Krishna. We can hear from you. Hare Bol, Mataji. My humble obeisances. Likewise, Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, you said that Krishna is in our heart and he's constantly advising the devotee, do like this, do like that, and helping the devotee. But uh, how is it that... Uh, how, how will... How will I really hear Krishna when he's telling me what to do? How will I know that this is really what he wants me to do? Because there's so much going on in the head all the time. How to discern Krishna's voice telling you what to do? Um, Labanya, are you still there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, go to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse number 7. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Sri Devi, read the verse. Jitatmana prashantasya paramatma samahitaha sitoshna sukha dukheshu tatha mana pamana yoho. For one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached. For he has attained tranquility. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. Okay, so one has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached. So if you can't connect with the super soul yet because the mind is not fully conquered, then what do you do? Keep trying. No, there's something else. Yeah, that too, that you want to do, but there's, there's an alternative, which is actually a, a fundamental. How does a new person know what to do or what not to do? Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. There you go. And which one is prominent? Guru. Okay. So Guru is the uh, external manifestation of Super Soul. Hmm. So simply we must turn to the spiritual master and humbly present our dilemma or difficulties and then the guidance of the spiritual master lights up the road we have to take. Is that That's correct? what the spiritual master is for, but it's not about working out all your material problems because material problems are not, <laughs> is not because Krishna doesn't care whether you decide to do your material thing this way or that way, because it's material. <laughs> you, you, we make this idea that I have to, I have to do this material situation in this way in order to get the result. Therefore, I want to know what is the best way to do it. So if I go to the spiritual master for that, then that's a waste of time. 
one should learn these things from day-to-day -day life and get advice from people who are who can help you in that way. But it's not that you come to your spiritual master with all the material problems. You come with spiritual questions and application of spiritual principles in day-to-day -day life. Then you can learn, if you learn these principles, then you can understand how to deal with your material problem. At least you'll understand how to receive the, the sources you need. Mm -hmm. Like that. So material problems are never solvable anywhere. And you solve one material problem, you create two more. And so. We've been trying to solve our material problems for how many lifetimes? We still got material problems. <laughs> Just try to become Krishna conscious and all your problems will go away. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Namita Mataji, you want to go uh, with the question? Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance to you, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. So Maharaj, you know, the verse that we just read, it said, conquer the mind. So what does that mean, Maharaj, and how to do it? Yeah, the mind is always telling us what to do. We should tell the mind what to do. And how to do that, Maharaj? How to stop the mind by, rather than... Yeah, by, by connecting with the intelligence. And by connecting the intelligence to Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra with scripture, with Guru, and with the saints, you get your knowledge from the saints, from Guru. You use you, that, that knowledge is your intelligence. And then you conquer the mind with that intelligence and direct the mind with that intelligence. That's called Sadhu Shastra. I'm sorry, not Sadhu Shastra. It's called... Uh, um, uh, what is it called? Mm. Uh, Shastra. Shastra. Seeing through the eyes of Shastra. Shastra. Shastra what? Chakshush? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shastra Chakshush. Chakshush. Chakshush means eyes. Shastra means Shastra, seeing through the eye of scripture. If we see through our material eye, then uh, we'll get material dust. Shastra Chakshus, that's it. So that means applying intelligence and directing the mind by the intelligence. If you let the mind direct you, then you're under the control of the mind. Maharaj, you said if you let the mar, uh, let the mind direct you. So how to stop the mind directing us and then we direct the mind? Yeah, I just told you. Apply the knowledge given to you by Shastra. Hmm. Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita what foods to eat, what foods not to eat, how much to how much we should how we should regulate our eating and sleeping, how to how to live in this material world so we can maximize our, our energies for devotional service, the basic principles. And chanting also plays a very big part in that. Yeah. If you want, if you want to know how to fight, you, you, you get into uh, Dhanurveda. If you want to, know how to, you want to know how to keep your health, you get into Ayurveda. If you want to know how to... Uh, Maintain family life. There is a whole section in the Vedas on how to uh, organize family life. And then all of that is subsidiary, secondary to our engagement in devotional service. Yes, the problem are, uh, with us is we're applying materialistic, secular, Western, uh, defunct ways of lifestyle and trying to be spiritual at the same time. <laughs> so I can't know. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. So, so, so our material life doesn't interfere with our, our spiritual life. We have to simplify our material life. 
And that way we live simply and we can focus on the important thing, Krishna consciousness. <laughs> if you live in a family, you have to know what it means to be a mother. You have to know all the dynamics of how to live as a mother. And you can learn that easy, it's all there. And then apply that in your activities of devotional service. So. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so the mind will tell you what to do, but you have to tell the mind what to do. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to just remember this uh, as my mantra, that I have to tell the mind what to do and not listen to the mind. Yeah, but you have to know what to tell them also. And that's called seeing through the eye of Shastra or seeing through the eye of knowledge, same thing. I think that, that Maybe, is the most difficult part, Maharaj. Yeah. yeah, it's difficult because sometimes we don't like it. <laughs> yes, we, we find it difficult or we it, it seems like it's contrary to what we like. And, you know, but it works. Mm -hmm. Yes, Therefore, you know, community is needed. Community is needed. Association with devotees is needed. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm going to try, definitely. Well, that's the process of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If you keep, tr keep trying, you'll get it right sooner or later. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances again. Guru Maharaj, I was thinking it may be really helpful for all of us because we are all uh, so isolated, living in different places now with COVID, all these restrictions. Maybe we can all have a Zoom meeting, all of us, God family, and just get to know one another and just see where we are and how to help one another. Just build community online. Ask our doubts, our questions, and get clarifications and inspire yeah, and can, encourage each other. You can set huh? You can set up a re, you can set up a resource bank. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. It'll be so helpful for each one of us. You can set up a resource bank and that from certain people you get certain spiritual resources and from other people you get certain material resources. So, that's community. Yeah, we can just get to know each other and help each other like that. It'll be so much better than struggling alone. Yeah, but it has to be directed by Guru, Shadow and Shastra, not just some feel good meeting, you know. <laughs> So Guru Maharaj, would you like to uh, share that? You set it up. You set it up and uh, you can tell me when you get it set it up and call me and I'll come. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Hare Krishna. Yeah, it'll work because that's our problem. Sadhu Sangha is, in, is our process. But I, I should tell you one thing. Uh, right now is a very good time for personal association. Take advantage of associating directly with devotees now. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, so, Namrata Mataji, I see your raised hand. Uh, do you want to go ahead with your question? Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, uh, I wanted to ask, how much, or should I say, should I ask, um, uh, should one rely on horoscope? Sometimes we hear... Uh, some planetary position is benefiting, some planetary position is distress. How, how should we see these problems as a devotee? Well, 
astrology is is allowed in certain areas for householders. In other words, when to uh, begin to create a child. Um, that, sh that can be astrologically determined. Two, um, when to get married, what are the, that's astrology also. Uh, when to get married, when to have a child. Um, let's see, what else is there? There's a few more that can be used. Yeah, so basic material things that may seem to be needed, that's all. But astrology, Prabhupada said for spirituality, as soon as you gauge a devotional service, your the lines on your hands automatically change. <laughs> so your destiny is changing as you make progress in spiritual life. But we, uh, astrology can also tell you a little bit about your nature and then how to use your nature in devotional service. That's nice, Diraj, but people don't know how to depend on Krishna. That's the problem. We say depend on Krishna, but we haven't learned the art of depending on Krishna. Depending on Krishna means fully understanding how to execute devotional service. But slowly, Maharaj, as in, how, as in when uh, we uh, go through this process, when we are involved in the process of Krishna consciousness, we can uh, rely on Krishna, right? That's all. There's no other place to rely on. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people, it, it happens. We have uh, heard sometimes that in in uh, one's horoscope, there is a period of time when one is, uh, you know, facing some uh, bad positions of the uh, planets. And, you know, then they ask uh, to do some, you know, serve some demigod and do all that. So rather than that, we should, uh, as a devotee, should we stick to devotional service for Krishna only? Yeah. Should, Krishna says, I am, Krishna says, the demigods get their power from me. I am the source of the demigods. Whatever the demigods can provide is coming from me alone. That's in the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter. So yeah, depending, be, be fully dependent on Krishna. But for practical day-to-day -day things, sometimes we use astrology just like when's the best time to travel, when's not a good time to travel. Just like Prabhupada, uh, Prabhupada, uh, there's a, there is a principle. It's in it's in the somewhere in the shastras. You don't travel on Thursday. Thursday is not a good day for travel. And between the hours of four and six p.m. on Thursday is the worst time for traveling on Thursday. And so, um, and the codices are not a good day for travel either. And so, but what did Prabhupada do? How did he deal with that? He was aware of it. So on Wednesday night, um, knowing that he had to travel the next day on Thursday, because this was his service to travel, he took his shoes and put it by the door, pointing in the direction he was traveling the night before, indicating that I'm leaving on Wednesday night. <laughs> well, Prabhupada did that, just to show, to honor the, these different, you know, energies, because there is energies within the material world that work in different ways. Just like if you're ready to take a trip and you're, the left side of your face starts to to uh, quiver, or your lip starts to quiver, or your left arm quivers or something, then you can know that there's gonna be some calamity you're gonna face. And if some other sign comes up, these are called omens. They're part of the material energy. You can't see them. And something is auspicious and something is not auspicious like that. 
So astrology gives you a little indication of that. But if you rely on that completely, then you're missing the whole point of devotional service. Because even if something apparently is going to be inauspicious, if we simply, if it's our service and, and it's unavoidable, then we should do it with complete dependence on Krishna. Because devotional service is transcendental to everything material. So like I mentioned, I mean, you can read in the Bhagavatam, there's talk about astrology. Finding a suitable match between a boy and a girl, astrology is used. That's one of the principles for astrology. And, uh, but higher than astrology within that category of determination is, is going to somebody who knows the, both the boy and the girl and saying, asking them, what do you think of this marriage? And they'll say, well, it doesn't look so good. Their natures are opposite. Or it looks good, it might be very good. We're not so sure. So astrology becomes a second, second opinion in finding, you know, a, you know, a partner in life. So it's used like that. Now you'll see even the Rindavan residents used astrology, but modern day astrology is not necessarily foolproof. So therefore finding a good astrologer is just as hard as applying the principles of astrology. There are some good astrologers, but unless they're devotee astrologers, I wouldn't trust them. So in this present scenario, it is rather more uh, uh, advisable to depend on devotional service of Krishna rather than uh, yeah. astrology. Yeah, you, for practical matters, you can use some of these techniques, some of these sciences to help, but you shouldn't be completely dependent on it. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, anybody has any more questions? Susanna Mataji, do you want to ask any questions? Susanna Mataji? Yes, Hare Krishna. Um, if the time allows, Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, is it okay? Uh, yeah. It yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mataji, go, go ahead. ahead. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask about associate one keeps a good breaking. balance between uh, giving and I think sorry um, Your voice what is should breaking. I do is it better now? Uh, can I write yeah it will be better maybe um, or you can try one more time can you come closer to your mic and uh, try again Mataji yes maybe like this yeah yes Mataji try again thank you um I, I was wondering if I could ask a question about how to keep the balance between uh, giving and uh, accepting association. And um, regarding I'm um, alone um, and I live far from the temple, I, uh, can I balance this only through reading and talking to um, devotees uh, online like Sri Devi Mataji? It's, it's a very good idea. Um, um, I would be very appreciating this if we could um, yeah, have more contact, maybe. Well, increasing our association increasing means increasing the opportunities that we get to develop an understanding of how to practice Krishna consciousness and we are social beings. We are not, uh, we, we thrive on being with other people and exchanging with other people. And that's our nature. 
unless you're a you know a tapas yogi sitting in the Himalayas who have mastered the yoga system. But generally, yeah, we are social beings. We look for association. It's necessary. You can't love your computer. You have to love a person. <laughs> We shouldn't be afraid of association because it purifies us and at the same time it elevates us. Purification means getting rid of some of the things we don't need. And elevation means we find the happiness we're looking for in that association. So book a ticket for uh, Croatia today and come to the <laughs> Ratha Yatra in Rijeka tomorrow. If you fly into, into Zagreb airport, we'll arrange for you to get to, or if you can, <laughs> if you can fly into uh, Rijeka, then you're right there. <laughs> That would make me very happy. But I'm not sure about these restrictions now, whether I have to do these PCR or shall I get the jab? I don't want, sorry to mention this, but I don't, I'm afraid of You're all in these things. <laughs> but You're I was very brave like five months ago. If you're in Hungary, yes, you can I simply am. you can get a, get into a car with a good, one or two other devotees and just drive to Rijeka. It's not that far, maybe a couple hundred miles. Maybe, so one yeah, doesn't maybe need two. like tests on the border or things like this. No, I'm not sure. Okay, I will ask. <laughs> well, you know, there's many other programs. <laughs> There's other programs coming up. Right. <laughs> I would be happy to come, Maharaj. Yeah, as much association is, is our life. Saru Sangha. <laughs> we forget all our problems when we're in. In fact, the problems go away when we're in. The problem is we just don't associate enough. Or we don't take advantage of that association that will can help us in Krishna consciousness. Don't think we can do it through the computer and expect to find satisfaction. It's not the same. <laughs> For sure, not the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, Mataji, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, you got a nice invitation. You have to consider that maybe they rethink again and uh, accept <laughs> this invitation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, all of you. That we can take part. It's a very good opportunity to meet Guru Maharaj. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there's going to be five sannyasis there at the <laughs> Rathiyatra tomorrow. Kadambakanana Maharaj wow. is there. Paladananda Maharaj is there. Um, Vishnu, uh, Mahavishnu Swami is there. Bhakti Ananda Goswami is there. <laughs> so good the, weather, the weather is really good. It's, 31 degrees. Yeah. Nice. Pretty hot, actually. <laughs> okay, so we'll say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Um, 
be at any we'll see you. Uh, hopefully, we can see you on Sunday night at the Zagreb Temple program. Yes, good night. You can tune in. Otherwise, I'll be back on Monday night. Yes, good much. Thank you so much uh, for your association and for your time today. Uh, thank you so Hare much. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you. Thank you for being the hostess who has given us the mostest. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>